Welcome to a Legendarium special that will cover a brief history of Trial by Combat. In this episode, we will learn how Trial by Combat evolved from a simple Germanic ritual into an elaborate dueling system governed by both royal law and the church. Like many other things in medieval Europe, judicial combat can be traced back to the Germanic nations which lived along the Roman borders. Roman authors noted that German chieftains and warriors settled disputes by shows of force and duels. This practice, on the other hand, remained unknown in Roman law or life. Yet when these nations crossed the Rhine and Danube rivers, they brought this practice with them as they established early medieval kingdoms. King Gundabad of Burgundy became the first to make trial by combat a part of the law in his Lex Burgundianum, written in 501 AD with input from local churchmen. This law code became influential and shaped legal thought throughout the continent. In an age before forensic science, medieval courts struggled with how to dole out justice. Judicial combat became an expedient when testimonies conflicted or reliable evidence could not be found. Duels to decide right and wrong might sound horrific to us, but medieval Europeans had grown accustomed to horrific violence. Brawls, rapes, and mass killings became a fact of life to them. In some ways, duels ensured that disputes could be settled with only one death rather than many. The courts believed that God would witness the duel and see to it that the righteous and truthful man would prevail. Indeed, warriors about to fight a judicial duel would attend mass, spend the night in church, and swear oaths upon holy relics before doing so. Judicial duels became popular among the Franks, who spread the practice throughout Europe during the Carolingian conquests of the 9th century. However, it died out among the Anglo-Saxons until the Normans brought it back after the conquest of 1066. Local laws and customs regulated the duels. They might be limited to certain crimes like death by poisoning or insulting the king. Participants might be obliged to pay for the event out of their own pocket. Duels might last for hours, for they often only ended when one fighter touched the wooden fence that surrounded them. In some cases, if the losing man died during judicial combat, his corpse would still be beheaded as punishment for his crime. Judges also chose the armor and weapons used by the duelers, and their choices could be random. In the infamous duel of Thomas Whitehorn and James Fisher of Norman, England, the local judges gave the two knights ram's horns to fight with. After a few blows, both men shattered their ram's horns. Since the judges ordered the duel to continue, the two men tried to bite each other to death. Whitehorn pinned Fisher to the ground and bit off his male organ. However, Fisher overthrew Whitehorn and bit off his nose. At that time, Whitehorn cried for mercy and confessed to the crimes he had been accused of. The authorities duly hung Whitehorn, and the now organless Fisher withdrew from town to live as a hermit. Unsurprisingly, by the 14th century, the lawyers and jurists coming out of the increasingly influential universities began criticizing the practice of dueling. They noted that a man might freely commit crimes if he remained confident in his ability to defeat anyone who might accuse him. In part because of these arguments, kings in Western Europe began to crack down on dueling, but in France, judicial combat would have one last hurrah. In 1386, in front of the Abbey of St. Martin, two ironclad knights fought one of the last judicial duels in France. It began when the Lady Marguerite, wife of Sir Jean de Corot, claimed to have been raped by her husband's former friend, Jacques Legris. Did Jacques truly rape Marguerite, or did the couple connive to slander an innocent man? To defend his wife's honor, Sir Jean challenged Jacques Legree to single combat. It began with a thunderous joust, with both men mounted on 1,400-pound war horses. 
Sir Jean spent most of his life fighting the Hundred Years' War, while Jacques connived his way up the social ladder by flattering powerful men. That meant he had a lot of money and could afford the best armor. Unsurprisingly, Jacques knocked Sir Jean from his horse, but Sir Jean then disemboweled Jacques's horse with a mighty blow. After the two men continued fighting on foot, Sir Jean finally stabbed the man who raped his wife through the throat with his sword. He turned to King Charles and shouted, Have I done my duty? The crowd gave him a thunderous ovation, and the king gave him Jacques's ill-gotten estates. Royal officers then stripped Jacques Le Gris's body of its armor and hung him in chains outside Paris alongside the traitors, bandits, and murderers. That would be the last judicial duel legally fought in France. However, in Germany and Scandinavia, married couples could still settle their disputes by fighting them out. Women could even fight duels if they were accused of adultery or slander, both judged womanly crimes. In such a duel, both parties engaged in physical combat, entering a wooden ring sewn into gray bodysuits and barefoot. Since the law considered a woman to be half a man, they forced the man to fight while standing in a waist-high pit, fighting with a wooden mace. Meanwhile, the woman fought with her wedding veil, wrapped in with a stone judged an appropriate weapon for a woman. During these brutal combats, the half-buried man could try wrapping the woman's veil around his club or tripping the woman. On the other hand, she could maneuver around him and even pull him from the pit. If the man lost but survived the duel, he would be beheaded in the public square. Should the woman lose, she would be buried alive. This curious notion of justice survived in Northern Europe until the 1500s. It is hard to pinpoint when and where the final judicial duels took place, though they survived in the rough-and-ready border regions of Scotland and Ireland well into the 1600s. However, in most kingdoms, increasingly powerful royal governments sought to suppress dueling. In a modern state, the central government sought a monopoly on all legal violence, and obviously judicial duels had no such place in such a state. Yet dueling survived the early modern age as the duel of honor, which took place between high-born men when one had accused the other of slandering them or wronging them. Though it had no legal standing, it reflected the changing times, with men as likely to use pistols as swords. It might seem barbaric to us, but it shows that men of the 16th and 17th centuries believed honor to be something worth dying for. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.